Good morning, everybody. It's 11 o'clock uh, a.m. Mountain Time. I'm Emily Taylor. I am in my studio. Um, we were going to do a recorded video today, but I decided to uh, to make this a live video. So I love to, I actually love to do lives. I love to see uh, people hop on and I love to be able to answer your questions. So today, uh, the question that I get a lot is, can I use, well, <laughs> we're going to get there in a second, um, because it's the number one mistake that you can make, and I'm going to demonstrate the mistake and talk about it. But before I get into that, I just want to make a few announcements about what's happening in the studio. So um, as you know, I'm working, working, working really hard to try and finish up the fabric collection that will accompany the block of the month. So that is the number one thing that Amelia and I have been working on. Um, but we are also right smack in the middle of our uh, Black Friday sale. So let me just give you a recap on Black Friday. Um, we have customer tiers at collagequilter.com. Gold customer tiers have access. They have also been given a 30% off coupon. So that sale is going on now. If you are a silver level tier customer, you will be getting an email right now with your coupon code and you will get 25% off. So the sale begins now for silver tier customers. And then on Thursday, or excuse me, Friday, Black Friday, um, there will be an email go out to everybody that is a customer uh, with a 20% off coupon across the board. So if you are looking for fabric bundles or any of my patterns, my books, you can get them 20% off um, through Monday, through Cyber Monday. Okay, so that's out of the way. Now, let me talk with you about the number one thing not to do when you are making a collage quilt. I've seen this happen and I know it makes people, it just destroys people when this happens. So, but before I get to that, Yes, Jennifer, this is a live chat. I was going to record it, but I decided I was going to join you live. So um, thank you for hopping on. It's great to see somebody. Monica from Copenhagen. Uh, Monica, I will be coming your way. I'm actually taking my family um, to Copenhagen in March. We will spend three nights in Copenhagen. It's after my visit to Norway. So uh, anyway, I'm super excited to come there because I think I may have mentioned that my heritage is from Denmark. Like I have great grandparents that are buried in Denmark. And um, yeah, so I've got cousins in Denmark. And uh, anyway, so that's kind of fun. Um, so thank you so much, everybody joining me from uh, Victoria, Texas and Janice from Indiana. Karen, great to see you. Um, happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody's getting ready for your Thanksgiving. Um, Chrissy, thank you for joining us from Germany. And um, Dorothy from Texas, thank you for hopping on and saying hello. Uh, Tanya said, Tanya from Tucson, she's on her way to Mississippi. So great to have you join us while you're on the road. Um, Janet from, from Nevada, thank you. Okay, it's great to see everybody. I love it. Um, okay. So the thing that I want to talk about, in addition to taking your questions, but we'll take your questions a little later. So if you have questions about collage quilting or mistakes that you've made that you want to know how to fix, now's the day. So type it in the chat. Um, also, oh, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. So the number one mistake to never make is to mix up using parchment paper and freezer paper. I have had on occasion, well, it happens more than occasionally, people assume that parchment paper and freezer paper are the same products. They are not. So you will hear me talk a lot about my parchment pressing method. I love to build collage quilts using my parchment pressing method. In fact, that's how I've made Pretty much everything that you see behind me in my studio. Um, my rooster pattern was made with that. The cardinal pat, the cardinal uh, project, octopus garden, um, the twelve days of Christmas. All of those 
patterns are made using this parchment pressing method. So the parchment pressing method requires the use of parchment paper. Parchment paper is a non-stick heat resistant surface. You might be using it this week as you, I used it yesterday when I made homemade rolls, put my rolls out on parchment paper, non-stick heat resistant. That's very, very important. It is not the same thing as freezer paper. These are different products and I'm going to demonstrate what happens when you build a collage on either piece, either type, and when it's appropriate to use freezer paper. Okay, so we've got these two darling little bunny rabbits. They are, this is from my Woodlands pattern, which will be back in stock this week. By the end of the week, uh, Woodlands will be back in stock. So you can pick it up at the Black Friday sale. So on one of them, I have, let me adjust my camera a little bit. There we go. On one of them, I have built my collage on parchment paper. This is how I recommend. And then let me also say, when I say I'm building a collage, um, my all my fabric pieces have been prepared with Steema Seam. Okay, so they I like light Steema Seam too. As you know, if you followed me, that's the that's my adhesive of choice. And when you're using parchment paper, it must be um, you have to use this double sided fusible web. Light Steema Seam 2 is what I recommend. It's what I say in all of my patterns. Okay, so this bunny rabbit has been made in on parchment paper. This bunny rabbit has been made on freezer paper. Let me show you what happens when we do both. Okay, so at the end of the process, after I've built it, I'm, I'm careful to press all of these pieces together. That makes them stick together. And when it's on parchment paper, then I can really easily peel the whole collage off. And it's a little bunny rabbit that then I can apply to a background fabric, right? So this has the steam seam still on the back and you can see that it's still sticky. That's the great thing that I really, really like about steam seam. It's one of the reasons that I promote this, I sell it. Um, you'll even see my pattern on the box of steam seam. So, um, okay, so that is steam seam. It comes off like a sticker. It makes it really easy to, uh, to work with, okay? Here is the same collage built on freezer paper. <laughs> oh no, oh no, it's not coming off. Oh, <laughs> dang it. And then I get emails and I see comments. Oh, here, I think I, I think I got it. Oh no, it's not coming off. What did I do wrong? Oh no. Ugh. That's what's going to happen if you build your collage on freezer paper. Freezer paper is the wrong product to build your collage because you will not be able to get it off. Okay, so let me show you how to use freezer paper. Freezer paper is awesome and I recommend keeping it in your studio if you like to create, if you want to create a template for something. So I've done this, I've traced out this, uh, this teacup on freezer paper, okay? And I've cut out the freezer paper and freezer paper is awesome because it has this paper side and then it has a waxy side. So when I lay it down on the, on top of, on the right side, this is how I do it, on the right side of my fabric, um, then I can take my scissors, Caroline, grab my scissors, would you please? I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna show you, but the bottom line is then it will come off really super, no, no fabric scissors, thanks. It'll come off really easily. There's no residue left over. That waxy side, thank you, love. Come say hello real quick to everybody. Pop your head in here. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> That's Caroline. She's my middle daughter. She's working now with us. And isn't she darling? She's the sweetest little thing. I love her so much. Okay, so when I 
use this, I'm going to use this as a template. Okay, that's what freezer paper is good for. It allows me to have a template and then I can cut around the template to create the shape that I need. Like this. Once I have that shape made, then I can press it, put it on part on a, a steam a seam, and then press it to the background fabric. Okay, so this is freezer paper is good for creating templates. It is not good for building a collage. Let me just show you these. So here's, you can see I've used these. They're getting kind of dirty. But uh, these were all made with the template method using freezer paper. Okay, if you are interested, these are, this is a free pattern. You can download those, the templates for the, for the hot pads uh, at the Bernina blog. So the We Also blog, I put it at the very, I put the link for that at the top of this chat. So if you want that, it's a free pattern, free templates, you can download and kind of learn how I've done that. And it also shows that I've done, I've used ink tents. So to kind of create a, sh a shadow for these little chinoiserie pots, which I really like, as you know. Okay, so anyway, that is my tip of the day. Do not, do not use freezer paper. Do not use freezer paper in place of parchment paper. Okay, so if you've done that, now you know you'll never do it again. And I'm sorry if you messed up your collage doing that. So now I am ready to take your questions. Okay, let's see. Jennifer asked a really good question. She said, Jennifer Shoemaker asked, does steam -a seam get old? So I have found that steam -a seam is kind of a finicky product. Okay, so I do think that it has a shelf life. And I think that it is affected by factors like humidity. Um, however, uh, the biggest problem that I've run into is if I'm peeling the paper off of steam -a seam sometimes the, uh, it will, it will kind of tear that glue in half. So you've got to be really careful. The, the trick for dealing with old steam -a seam is to reactivate it using heat. So I've never had a roll of steam -a seam that I have to toss out, um, I, I do have to be careful sometimes peeling it off. And I find that uh, applying heat again will help with that. So I I, I, I think that answers it, that it, it can be a finicky product, but I'm willing to put up with its temper tantrums because I really do love that product. It's just, I haven't found anything else that I like as well. Um, while I'm speaking of double-sided fusible webs, there is another YouTube video on my channel uh, about where I do a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison about different fusibles. So you might wanna check that out if you're learning about different fusibles. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna, parchment paper is, okay, so Maxine Tarsi says, thank you, Maxine, this is helpful, I think. She said, uh, Parchment paper is grease proof paper in the UK, right? So it's a different product or labeled differently in different parts of the world. Um, in the US, we Reynolds parchment paper. Let me also say that I have tried different types of parchment paper. I've gotten the no name brand that's cheap over at the, you know, wherever the dollar store or Costco um, brand. I really prefer the Reynolds. So Reynolds brand seems to be the best. It's got the most nonstick, the silicone uh, nonstick. Okie dokie, let's see. Vicky asked a great, um, a great question. She said, is there an expiration date on the collage quilter gift certificates? That's a great question. And I am sorry that I don't know off the top of my head. I don't think so. So if you have a gift certificate um, and you want to save it for, I know there is a, there is an expiration for your rewards 
points and your rewards dollars, and you can find the expiration for that in your rewards account. So let me just walk through again how to find your rewards. Those are different than collage quilt or gift certificates. A gift certificate obviously is something that somebody else has purchased for you. Most likely you don't generally purchase it for yourself, but um, those I don't think have exp expirations, but I'll double check. The rewards do. I think they're good for a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, so it's a good amount of time. And you can find out what the expiration date is when you log into your account at Collage Quilter and then go, it will look at your, you can look at your rewards by clicking down on see my rewards. Okay. I think it's the bottom left. Vicki asked a great question. She said, is your bunny pattern available? Yes. So this bunny pattern is part of the Woodlands collage quilt pattern. And that has been out of stock. We have just reordered it. It will be in stock in the next couple of days. I'm just waiting for it to arrive. And <clears throat> hopefully it will be available. I know it will be this week. So you can probably get it this weekend at the Black Friday sale for 20% off or more if you're a gold or silver tier customer. Um, let's see here. Okay, I'm going through questions. Jennifer said her uh, steam -a seam is not sticky. They were pre-cut sheets. Um, let's see, and I think I answered it. So she said, yes, thanks. Okay. Uh, Karen asked a really good question. She said, is parchment paper equally non-stick on both sides? Um, I have found that to be true. Um, I don't ever pay any attention to which side I'm using and I've never had a problem with it. So I assume that it's the same on both sides with re the Reynolds. I can't speak for any other parchment paper, but for the Reynolds parchment paper, I do believe that the nonstick is on both sides equally. So you shouldn't have any problem with it. I do a gazillion trillion collages on parchment paper. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Elizabeth said she's a gold member. Thank you for being a gold member. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. I am Sylvie said, thank you for the live. You are welcome. I, I said, I love doing live videos. I just want to do what's going to be helpful for you guys. I want to see you succeed and I want to spread the love of creativity because it just it makes me so happy I know it makes you happy too and I want you to be successful with your collage quilts so um I always welcome your feedback about what you would like to see from me whether you want bit you know record pre-recorded videos or um live videos I know a lot of people like the lives okay so Janet just asked a question is there a date for the quilt along yet uh let me give you kind of the update um, Amelia and I, as you know, have been working on this fabric collection and accompanying collages. I've been working on the collage designs. Um, it is a, a whole quilt. Uh, the, the subject is a garden that I love. I'll introduce more about that later. Um, every, uh, there are 10 blocks. And it's been an interesting experience for me to be able to um, put all of them in a quilt. I want everything to coordinate, but I want everything to be unique and different too. So that every month, if you sign up for the block of the month, it's not going to be doing the same thing over and over. I think you're really going to love it. And we wanted to make sure that we have plenty of fabric for everybody to create the quilt that they want to you know, so anybody can participate. We're not going to run out of background fabric, which has happened in the past. So we have finished the designs for all of the fabric. We have, let's see, I was just counting them up. Oh, between 16 and 18 different fabrics that will be used in the background and for fussy cutting for the each of the blocks. So that's been a lot of work, you know. Um, 
I've done a whole bunch. Amelia's done a whole bunch. We've worked together. It's just been an awesome process. Um, obviously, I have more experience as a fabric designer. Maybe you didn't know that, that I used to be a fabric designer for Riley Blake Designs. And for Riley Blake, I had created probably 300 different designs. Um, I had 15-ish collections that came out with them over the course of 10 years, I think. Um, and so I do have a lot of experience with that. Amelia, not so much. I've had to train her about uh, the use of Photoshop and Illustrator. And we bought new, you know, software and Wacom's and all this fun stuff. So we've been working really hard. But anyway, we're done with that. And now we're sending it all to uh, Korea so that we can begin the process of refining all the colors, making sure that the prints come off just right. Um, anyway, so the bottom line is our goal is to have all of that sent to Korea by the end of this month. I'm hoping by the end of this week, I think we're a little bit. So, and then I'm hoping to launch this in February, fingers crossed. Okay. Uh, and the way it's going to work is we will have a period of registration. So for a month, a month and a half, you can register for the block of the month. Um, you will get a discount if you register in advance. Um, past that time, you can buy them individually from the website, but you won't be part of the subscription group. Um, okay, so that's that. Let's see here. Tanya said, regarding the steam esteem, in her experience, it does lose its stickiness um, as it ages. So from Tanya's experience, steam seam does tend to age. It does have a shelf life and it will lose its stickiness. So keep that in mind. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jennifer said, can parchment paper be used as a pressing sheet? Yes. And speaking of pressing sheets, people have asked, well, oh, I can build a collage on a pressing sheet, a silicone uh, pressing sheet. Yes, you can. But the, the drawbacks for that are you can't trace the design on it. You can't draw on it the way you can with parchment paper. And the other thing is I tend to store uh, collages on parchment paper until I'm ready to use them. I think that protects the steam esteem from get, picking up lint and dust and getting all yucky on the back. So I don't wanna have to invest in 15 to 20 different uh, silicone pressing mats. I wanna just use a $5 roll of parchment paper to do that. So you can draw on parchment paper that you can't draw on the mats. And you can, you can have multiple collages sitting in your drawer waiting to be used. Okie dokie. Oh, let's see here. Um, Gail asked a question. I know you've talked in the past about copyright. And she said, could I sell a quilt that I made with one of your patterns, giving you credit, of course. Gail, great question. Thank you so much for asking. I really appreciate uh, you being upfront and honest and asking. And yes, I think go ahead. I would love to have you sell your quilts made with my patterns. So here's my opinion about it. I Look, I'm creating designs for you to create your project with, right? Um, and now I'm also creating fabric. Most fabric designers are like, yeah, use my fabric to create your quilts, sell your quilts. That's the purpose of what we're creating. Um, I do think that it's fair for the buyer of your quilt to know that you based the, the quilt was, um, the, the design is not your original. That's just common courtesy for the people who are buying it. Generally, they don't, they, they're not gonna care that you didn't design it from start to finish. Just, um, just let them know as a courtesy. And yeah, I think it's great. Go out and sell your products, make money. Good idea. Uh, okay, so I hope that answered your question, Gail. Um, we also, we had a video at one time where I interviewed a friend of mine who's an attorney and we asked all of these copyright questions. I haven't been able to find that video, so I think we'll have him on again 
uh, early next year, okay? Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Tanya, for the nice um, for the nice comment. I appreciate that. Let's see. Okay, Virginia said she was looking for the link to the hot pads you showed, but did not find it. Uh, let me see if I can just add that again in the chat. Okay, I just added that again. So if you're looking for the link for these hot pads, this will provide you with instruction and the templates. Uh oh, that's my phone. Let me just turn that off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so if you're looking for the link, I just put it in the chat. Let's see. Tanya said, how much will the subscription be for the block of the month? I don't have an exact price yet, but we'll get there soon. As soon as I kind of figure out everything, I will let you know. Um, okay, let's see here. Oh, this is fun. Christine is from the Jersey Channel Islands. I'm so glad to hear that you're enjoying my book. I hope it's this one. Anyway, uh, great to have you join me. Thank you. Um, let's see here if we have other questions. Oh, Janice also said, okay, so folks, this is important. Janice also said, I too have had problems with older Steema Seam. I had two entire packages that were unusable. I tried to return them and they wanted, they wanted me to send back the bad ones. Of course, I had trashed them already. Okay, so I don't know, I can't speak to Amazon sellers, but I will tell you that if you have a problem with any of my products, you contact me. I have, I guarantee I stand behind all the things that I sell, including Steema Seam. So if you ever have a problem with anything you purchase from me, just let me know. Uh, let's see here. Vicki asked, will the subscription include the pattern and fabric? So uh, the block of the month will work like this. We will send out uh, the pattern and the fabric each month to create that block. So yes, that will sign you up for everything you need to create that block. And I am so excited to share these blocks with you. It's going to be really, really fun. Um, okay. So I'm just looking to see if there are any other... Uh, any other questions that I can answer for you? We're coming up on the half hour. I like to try and keep these about a half hour so that I don't, uh, don't cut into your day too much. Um, let's see if I don't want to miss anything. I think we've got everything. Oh, one more. Penny just asked. Um, Penny asked this. Uh, can we subscribe to the block of the month without the fabric? Uh, generally, no, but um, we're going to make as many options available for you to purchase this and to participate as possible. So I, I envision that you will be able to get a discount if you subscribe for the all 10 month, and that will include pattern and fabric. If you prefer not to do that, you can buy them individually as a kit. So pattern and fabric individually. Um, and then I think we'll also make each pattern available separately. But of course, the block of the month gets priority. They'll get their, fir their shipments first. Um, I don't know at what point we'll release the patterns. So there are a few things that we still have to figure out. But um, Let's see, Vicki said, can we have another sneak peek of the block of the month? Let me see, I can't remember. I think I've shown you the tulips. Oh, I don't wanna to show too much. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. Uh, <laughs> let me think here, what else do I wanna show you? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not gonna give you any sneak peeks right now. <laughs> um, but they'll be coming very soon, I promise. Let's see here. <laughs> Vicky said, please, please. Um, okay, I'll, sh uh, I'll show you one more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody's like, please show me, show us a sneak peek. 
Okay, here's another project that will be in the block of the month. Um, now, this is uh, <laughs> this is a funny little the, a funny story about this one. I can never remember the name of this plant. I don't know. I I get confused whether it's called Caladium or Callius. And so Amelia and I have just started calling it the cholera plant. <laughs> and I know cholera is a disease. Um, <laughs> so anyway, here's another sneak peek. Now, this one, of course, has been built on parchment paper. So there you go. There's one more. It's going to stay on the parchment paper until we get our, our fabric in. And we're going to build the block and put this on the block. So there you go. There's your sneak peek, you guys. Cow. Caladium. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate. I'm glad you like it. Beth, I haven't I haven't released a date yet. I'm I'm hoping for February, but we'll see. Oh, you can grow caladium in Hawaii. That's awesome. It is a beautiful plant. So around here, I live in Utah, and it is an annual that we can plant and we normally put it in our pots and stuff, but um, it is full on winter here in Utah. Thus the ski sweater turtleneck because we got a big snowstorm and I think there were several feet of snow delivered into the mountains last night. And I have a oh, couple inches in my yard on, it's beautiful right now. It's all snowy and lovely. Um, okay. So guys, thank you again for joining me. As always, I love to see you and I hope that you will have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And um, one thing I'm grateful for is this community of quilters. I'm so grateful to be a part of it and grateful for all of you for your goodness and your kindness towards me and um, for helping me to have this little business in my home and being able to employ my daughters. I love it. So uh, think about what you're grateful for, and I hope you have a wonderful week and a wonderful Thanksgiving. Okay. Oh, Vicki said, what about the cats? The cats are going to be coming shortly on the heels when we get the block of the month done. The cats will be following right before, right after that. Um, okay, guys, I'm out of here. I got to go get to work. I've got a lot of work to do. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hopefully you'll pick up some stuff at our Black Friday sale and take care. It's great to, great to see you guys. Adios.